Yo, like and subscribe. Hi! I'm so happy to see you. I have been so down bad lately. Like, down bad. I got, I don't know, I think just like a stomach bug or something. And for the past week, I have been throwing up. <laughs> Haven't been able to keep a meal down. I really thought this was it for me. I just thought <laughs> Because I was so sick. I've never felt so nauseous in my life But today is the first day. I finally feel like myself again So I want to go outside and I want to read a bit But I think I'm just gonna read Harry Potter on my own because y'all when I tell you the series has taken over my life I mean, I literally don't want to pick up another book but this series and it's terrible because I have other books in my TBR and I genuinely want to read them. And this month, like all my friends helped me pick my March TBR and I can't let them down. So today we are going to force pry these gosh darn mother freaking books out of my hand and actually read some books on our March TBR. And I actually have the ones that I want to read. So I want a self-help book. So I picked this one. This is Alexis's pick. This is The Untethered Soul. And then this is Lynette Adkins pick. This is A Certain Hunger. So I kind of want to dabble into both. I haven't started either. So we'll read these two today and just take a break from all the fantasy world. I've been loving it there, but I do need to read other books. Like I need to have a life outside of that. And I think today is the perfect day to do that. Also, the weather is gorgeous today. It is so beautiful. It's been very rainy here in New Jersey for like the last month, I would say. And it's been really cold too, but then some days it will be cold and then other days it will just be like very muggy. Today, the weather is perfect. It's like 55, 60, so not cold at all. And there's no rain and the sun is out. So guess who's taking their happy behind outside? You and me, kid, you and me. So let's go get the dog. He's just staring at me. <laughs> we're gonna go get Milo and we're gonna head outside. I did wanna be outside more and like go to a cafe and do all that fun stuff. But because I'm just now starting to feel like myself again, <laughs> baby, it's like four o'clock, five o'clock. So we don't have a lot of time. So I'd rather just spend the day with you at home having a little cozy reading vlog. What do you think about that? If you like that idea, like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The weather feels so good out here. I am so happy. It feels like the first real like inklings of spring, which is exciting because spring is my favorite season. I just feel like it's the perfect combination between like not too hot, but not too cold either. Milo's literally so happy right now, <laughs> but it's like nice enough where you can put on like a light jacket and just be outside with nature. So I'm very happy. The thing is though, I'm not the only one who had this idea. Literally everyone and their kids are out here today at the park, so <laughs> I can't really talk to you guys, unfortunately. I really wanted to, but everyone is outside. So I think I'm just gonna find like a nice little sitting area and just read for a bit, and I'll talk to you when I can talk to you. a few pages into this but I can already tell from how it began why Lynette loves this book so much the writing is just almost sultry like it's very it pulls you in it draws you in and you can tell that it has a very dark undertone which I'm excited for because it sounds like I'm in for a really wild ride and she did say that she said it's kind of even for literary fiction, it's very different from what I usually read. So I love books that try to make me look outside of my own perspective. And I definitely can feel that this is that type of book. And the forward, this is what the beginning said. To all the bad girls, but especially to Molly and Caitlin. So I, I can already tell. <laughs> also, my dog is literally acting like a crackhead. He has not stopped moving since we got out here. 
I'm gonna have to give him a bath. I literally just gave him a bath like three days ago and look at him. As soon as the book got good, it started raining outside. <laughs> I'm so mad. Now, not only is Milo muddy, but he's also soaking wet. So there's no way around it. I'm definitely gonna have to give him a bath today. But right now, I'm gonna finish my dinner. It doesn't look it, but it's delicious. This is like my favorite go-to meal. So at the bottom, it's tri-colored quinoa you can get from any grocery store. And then on top, I buy a ton of vegetables from the farmer's market. So I get zucchini, broccoli, mushrooms, <laughs> cherry tomatoes, onions, peppers, stuff like that. I mix them all together, make a big batch, and then I just put quinoa on the bottom, all those vegetables, and then I usually put like um, a fried egg, which I did this time too, and it's so good. But to add the real flavor, I add the chili peppers on top and then like green onions. I am telling you, all you have to do is try it. It's so delicious and it's like super easy. And it feeds me for the entire week. I never get tired of it. And if I do, I just eat noodles or something. And come right back to this another day. I also usually only drink water, but recently I've been drinking these Olipop things and they're so good. This is my favorite flavor, the ginger lemon. It's like a prebiotic or something and it helps with digestive support and stuff like that. I don't know, it's supposed to be like a healthier version to soda because I don't drink soda and there's very little sugar in here and it's supposed to be really good for you. I don't know. I learned about it when I went on the trip and they're really good. I really wish I had this book on my Kindle because in situations like this when I want to eat, I can still read and I don't want to ruin my book by actually trying to eat and read now. I hate that. I just read for an hour and so far the book reminds me of a few things. Let me just tell you the basic outline of the story so far that I can understand. So this woman, she's like, she thinks that she's like the it girl. She is the main character in life, right? And she's currently like a foodie and she writes about food and different things and she goes and tries these different restaurants and gives her opinion and she's like a critic basically. And the story initially starts kind of at the end of her demise. So at the end of her selfishness, at the end of her getting caught for the crime that she committed. If you remember, this is the book where this food columnist turns into a cannibal and starts murdering people and um, like trying to eat that as cuisine as well. And so the beginning of the book starts off where she gets arrested. So I'm not like telling you any spoilers or anything. It does tell you in the synopsis, but based on that and how she's writing, it reminds me a lot of the show You on Netflix, uh, like the psychopath, the killer, who's just looking for love. And the reason why he kills people is because they make him do it type of thing. She has that same energy. And to my horror, <laughs> It does kind of remind me of American Psycho as well, but not in the insufferable sense. It's in a different way where it's like, it's a main character that you love to hate. You already know this character isn't someone that you would look up to or relate to, hopefully. <laughs> but it's a character that you can like, just observe and try to understand. And if not understand, understand why you don't understand them. And just 
viewing them as their own flawed individual. And so based on that perspective, I've just been reading it and trying to follow along with her story. And so far I am intrigued. Like I like how the story is written. I will say though, sometimes like books or authors try to have a lot of descriptive language or use a lot of allegories and just uppity language to make it sound even better than it is. And it's like every sentence is like that. So that's kind of annoying to me because I'm like, girl, just say what you got to say. I like having that mix in between. It's like anything. Too much of anything is not good. And for it to be every single sentence, at times that like I've noticed as I'm reading, I'm like, ugh, it's giving me the ache a little bit. So that's very interesting to me. But I also notice the more that I read it, the more that I'm adjusting to this writing style. And not only that, the more I'm like intrigued with where it's going because she, even though she starts towards the end of the story, she's going back in time in her life that brought her to this situation. And so as the reader, naturally you're gonna wanna know why and know more about this individual. So naturally I'm becoming more curious as I read. I'm only 50 pages in, uh, I was just reading for that hour. But so far, I will say that I am intrigued and I'm interested to see where it's going. I also think it's very interesting how this author is combining like the life of a psychopath and hearing their internal thoughts with feminism. Because in a lot of these examples, like a lot of the things that she's writing about, she's talking about how she got addicted to the power of being a woman, using her her feminine wiles to get what she wants in life and how it has propelled her in life. And it's very interesting to see how this psychopath using their qualities, their best qualities to their advantage. So I don't know, I feel like I haven't read a book like this, but it, even though it does remind me of American Psycho, obviously, even though I'm 50 pages in, I can already tell this is a much better version of American Psycho. If I can read 50 pages and be curious it already be American Psycho because that book was so insufferable. We're not going into it. I have put that book to bed, but because it reminded me of it, I did want to touch on that subject. So I don't know. So far, I'm having a good time. I'm really interested to see what her life story sounds like. And I also highlighted some really good like one liners. And that's what I was saying. Like a lot of the books that are like this who have very uppity language and try to make like a metaphor out of every single sentence. Yes, there's a huge downside with that because I feel like just get to the point sometimes, but also there are a lot of good one-liners. So one thing that I highlighted was on page 42, it said, you can be too rich and too thin, but you can never know too much because this, at this point, she's just talking about how she uses her knowledge to manipulate people basically. And I just thought that was a really good way to say that. Oh, I also highlighted another one. It said, love is the languid sigh of death. So just in that, you get to see their mentality, see how much value they see in other people and like how mental diseases like this really make you feel like you're the center of attention because she was talking about how she believes that she's self-diagnosing herself and thinking that she is this type of mentally ill person. So I don't know, I just thought that was very interesting. Before I get into any more, I think it's time to wash my puppy. He hates being in his little crate, but I can't have him around the house when he's so muddy. So I've kind of just put it off for a few hours, but I feel bad for him. I don't want him stuck in there. So I'm just going to bite the bullet and do it now. one clean puppy and very oily face later <laughs> I'm all good to go man I look rough in this viewfinder ah, ah. <laughs> to be fair though I just did my nighttime routine and I always look super oily after because I put on a lot of products so that's that but with my hair <laughs> y'all I'm not gonna lie 
Every time I'm about to take out my braids, I hate doing it all in one day because it will literally take like eight hours. Cause I try to be really careful to not break my natural hair off. So I always take very, very good care of my hair as I'm unbraiding them. But consequently it takes all day. So my new strategy this time <laughs> was to take out like three to five braids every day until the final day that I want to take out my braids. So then we can break up all that time it's going to take me to actually do them. And with this hairstyle in particular, like there's extra hair than usual that I need to take out. So it's been taking even more time, but y'all it is insane in here. Look at this. What is this that? is my hair that I've taken out <laughs> and these are the braids. So I have like, I don't know, 20 braids out that I've just been hiding in a bun all week because <laughs> I just don't want to do it all at once. Oh, it's tiring. So I'm sorry for the rough appearance. I, when I said cozy reading vlog, I meant cozy reading vlog. <laughs> like and subscribe if you still love me. Anyway, it's almost time for bed, which I'm kind of excited for because y'all, as I mentioned earlier, I am still reading the Harry Potter series, but because I have to read other books, I have to. As a book, YouTuber, I have to read other books. It's just so hard to let these books go. So instead what I've been doing is reading the Harry Potter series at night and like at work when I go to work and reading at least 30 minutes of non Harry Potter books every day. I literally had to put myself on a time limit to read other books. Y'all, this series has me in a chokehold. It's insane. I'm currently on the fifth book, which is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I'm only like 20% through, but to be fair, this book is like 900 pages. So I'm doing something. It's just so good. It is crazy. Like all I do is watch content about it. Y'all, when I tell you I'm down bad, I mean, I'm down bad. Like borderline want a scar on my face type of bad. Like this series is so good and I cannot believe I missed it. And y'all, last weekend I watched, so right now, as I mentioned, I'm on the fifth book. So last weekend I watched the first four movies they were so good. But you know what? I do have a bone to pick with Warner Brothers because the fourth book was my favorite thus far. Why is the fourth movie so different from the fourth book? Dobie's not even in it. Like how he got the gillyweed to swim and stuff. Like there's a bunch of stuff that's in the book that's not in the movie. But like egregiously so. It's not like, oh, I wish they added these little minute details. No, they're like big things, like big plot changes and like certain things weren't even talked about. I am upset. I'm like 10 years late, but I am upset <laughs> because what the heck? I would love to have seen how that played out. Like however that played out in the book, how it would play out on the big screen. So I don't know. I was kind of disappointed in that. I still love the movies, but because we are so far advanced technologically, I feel like I can't appreciate the movies as much as I could have if maybe I watched them when they initially came out. But these books are standing the test of time. They're so good. After this, to be honest, to be honest, I want to read the Percy Jackson series and just do a full YA fantasy like era for myself. Maybe that's what 2024 has destined for me. And I'm okay with that. Take me, take me. <laughs> These series are just so good. And with Percy Jackson, I actually did read a lot of those books um, when I was younger, but I don't think I ever finished the series. I know me and my brothers all love that series though. And I think that's the first book that I even got my little brother into reading. He doesn't read too much now, but I know that was the first book that genuinely grabbed his attention. So I kind of want to go back to that world, especially because they have that new show. And I heard that they're going to have a Harry Potter series, like a show series too. So... I feel like my year is pretty much jam-packed with all of this fantasy stuff and I'm okay with that. <laughs>